If I was going to sell some stories, I'd have sold some stories last year and buried this prick. Buried him. But not, why would I want to do that? Why? How long was your kid, brother? Never. <laughs> 2003. Never, yeah, never. <laughs> she was still sleeping when he was like five, six months pregnant with my kid, so. Did you have your inklings before? Spoke to mum about it, mum said, nah, don't be silly. Ooh. Mummy's boy. Yeah. <laughs> nice, innocent family man when you're banging everything in sight, looking for plunge. How old is he? 48, 49. He needs to grow the fuck up. And going on like some bitch. Just fucking get away from me. The Central Club. What's going on, people? Welcome to the Central Club. This episode is brought to you by Reinspire Printing and the Fairwater Pub. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the club, and hit the bell button to be notified of future content. Today, we are obviously in a pub. We're in the Fairwater Pub, uh, my local, to be precise. And uh, we've got a guest who uh, I'm very excited to have down, really. Um, he's familiar with these places as well, although we don't come down very often. <laughs> Uh, it's Rodri Giggs. Yeah, Paul. You right? What's going on? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thanks for coming. Yeah, definitely um, brings back some memories being here. Uh, like I say, before we come on, it was always around days, kids. Yeah, yeah. And, and you literally don't come down much, do you? No, not as much as I used to. Because when we were kids, we'd come down like every school holiday, we'd come down. So, yeah. Yeah, not as much now. I mean, if I do come down, it's, it's not over this side, it's more near town. Yeah, yeah, because I, th I think we'll talk about it in, in, in the podcast, but on, on previous podcasts, you've spoken that you don't even speak to some of your family, do you really? No, you know? no, I haven't spoken to family over here. I haven't spoken to for probably since my um, granddad's funeral, but properly, yeah, since 2011. Uh, seen a cousin of mine, uh, Callum, uh, in town about two or three years ago, but five-minute talk, and that was it, really. yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, one day you can reconcile and... Well, all I did is stop ringing him, so my phone's, phone's open, it's just that... Yeah. All I did was, like we say, before we come on, all I did is stop ringing him. Yeah, they, well, they say that, don't they? You know, stop texting your friends <laughs> or family yeah. and, and see, you know, how many do reply, you know? And I think and people are busy, uh, isn't it? Yeah, busy for, yeah, quite telling though, but... Yeah. Life yeah. goes on. Well... You know, we've been trying to get this podcast for, I reckon, at least a year and a half now. Probably longer. Probably longer. Yeah. Um, and although um, you've done a few big ones like James English, uh, Dodge Woodall and others as well, um, I don't really want to dive too much. Well, we will. I mean, it must be stressful going in in this story all the time. No, nah, not really anymore. It's been a long time, so I've told it. It gets tiring of telling it. Like I was saying before, this is the last one I'm probably going to do. Um, not because I don't like to talk about it, it's just boring. Just move on. Yeah. And um, yeah, we move on. Yeah. Well, the reason why we're doing it is because we were meant to do this a year and a half ago, <laughs> all right? Yeah. And it's nice to, because of the locality and, you know, being, you know, a closely tied to card, I thought it'd be really good to get you on. So for, for those people who obviously haven't seen, uh, you know, a bit, a bit about you, can you give us a backstory of, of how, you know, where you come from and, uh, well, we was, we born, was born in Ely, um, lived in Ely for about two or three years, then we moved to Salford, uh, me and my brother, my mum and my dad, my dad playing rugby for Swinton, and then yeah, just went from there, went to school obviously in Salford and grew up in Salford, but always come back here in the school holidays, so we'd spend 12, 14 weeks a year back here. Christmas without fail, six weeks holidays, we'd be there for six weeks, so, and that would be every year, so we'd spend a lot of time here. Yeah, and it was you, your brother, Ryan as well? Me, my brother, mum, my dad would never come, my dad would always stay at home or whatever, but it would always be me, me, me Ryan, and my mum, yeah, we'd either stay at uh, my auntie's in Fairwater, just over the road there, or at my nanny's in Pendrain. Yeah, so your dad played at a decent level in rugby, didn't Yeah, yeah, he played for Wales, played for Cardiff, and then obviously played rugby league for Swinton, yeah. Was it a re reason why you wouldn't come back to Cardiff during them times, or was it just because no, he was just busy? Obviously, no, just, what, what do you mean? Well, you said my dad never used to come down with us. I'm assuming that I never really thought about it. He used to 
probably obviously him used to go out drinking over Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> knowing him. Does he live up there still now? Or is he back up? No, he lives. He lives uh, near Newport now. Yeah, yeah. And and your dad. So your 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 mother's side was from Fairwater. You said yeah. Fairwater. My nana lives in Pentrabane, and and obviously we talk about Joe and Sam's mum Tracy. Yeah. She lives in Pentrabane as well. And then your dad's side was Ely, is it? My dad's side is Ely. Yeah. Yeah. And did you uh, play sports at a young age as well? Yeah, you always. Sport really love athletics, football, rugby, uh, cricket, tennis, anything sport, anything really, it's, except hockey. To hate hockey, but yeah, rugby was my first. But um, yeah, as soon as my dad went when he was younger, rugby went out the window. He's just playing football and messing about, getting in trouble really. Yeah. What well, obviously? What was your relationship like with your with your siblings? With your siblings, your brother Ryan. Like, what was that like yeah, growing up? Good. It was good, obviously, when we were kids. We always would be together and we, we, we'd always be with each other and, and and do things together. But soon as, like, it seemed to when my dad went and my mum got into a new relationship, it sounded to... He, he, and he was up with 13, 14, getting into football, playing football, staying out, staying at his friends a lot. So then that's when I would be on my own a lot or... Yeah, so it just went from there. Yeah, and, you, and you're the youngest as well, yeah? Yeah, we're the youngest, but now I've got two sisters... Well, but, Two sisters and another brother, but two a sister to me dad and a brother to me dad, both younger and a sister and obviously Ryan. Yeah, mum and son. Yeah. You um, like you said, you played at a decent level football and rugby. <clears throat> um, did you always feel like you was like Ryan was always superior, being in that like kind of Manchester setup? No, not no, not really, no. And obviously being the younger brother as well. Um, you, you always you get compared, but obviously. He was on a different level because he was more into football where, like I say, I got into with friends that would not be into football and went away from that. Yeah. Getting in trouble, doing things that I shouldn't be doing. Obviously, my dad wasn't about, my mum was getting into a new relationship. So I'd be on, I'd be on my own a lot. So, yeah, you just get into... Yeah. Sport. If my mates were doing footballers, then I probably would have been a better footballer. But so no, the- and then I'd get in trouble at school and obviously I'll get expelled from school. And um, that's where Torquay got in, got in. That's where Torquay got in contact with me, asking me to go for a trial football. Then Torquay, yeah, Torquay Knights. That's when I went to Torquay, went for a trial there for two weeks, and then they offered me a two-year contract. So I ended up going there, staying there for about eight or nine months. I kept on getting in trouble there, and then they put me with the chairman's daughter. And we used to go to the chairman's house on a on a Sunday for for Sunday roast. And used to have this big, massive wallet. I mean, a big, massive wallet. I remember seeing it one day going up the stairs and I just went like that and took a load from it. Put it in my pocket. What? <laughs> just took it. I told one of the players. Anyway, the players, one of that that player got caught doing something that he shouldn't have do. And so less in his sentence, he, he told, said, told him what I did. So, yeah, he ended up getting sacked and then back in Manchester. Wow, so you, you know, and, and, and after and I, that, that was it. Then there was no yeah, football. and I don't mean to compare at all. It's no. not what I'm trying to do. But when you look at, like, obviously what Ryan went through, it seems like that that class of '92 or whatever. Like they were all very disciplined, and like compared, to, you you obviously weren't very disciplined, was you? No, but he had probably the right people around him. Yeah, and, and yeah. I didn't probably if I had the right people, I wouldn't have been as good as him early on. But eventually, I would have been. But yeah, it just didn't happen. Yeah, you believe that then? You, yeah, 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 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. So, growing up in Salford, like like you said, going around with a round crowd and stuff, it must have been very easy to get into, yeah, into some yeah, shady situations. What was you like growing up? Cars, my mates like robbing cars, motorbikes, just constantly on motorbikes, or cars, and yeah, <laughs> just getting stuff that I really sh- shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And then obviously... then. Seemed to go that way, and even when I got a little bit older and when I started watching United, you know, week after week, I'm, I'm going walk, walking around with the hooligans and meeting up with rival fans. And swear it on, it was like, it was one point, I'm like, What am I doing? <laughs> I just got out of it. So it was just like, But the good lads, I still speak to some of them, yeah, but like the poor Doyles, and yeah, yeah, they had a the, big firm as well, Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, they, they were scary, yeah, but. So you went away, like, was that, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
So they'd be ringing them on the coach, right, where are we meeting? And I'd be like, what, you actually meet? You actually ring the fans? It was crazy to <laughs> well, me. That's but, what you do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was one night at Blackburn, when it went off at Blackburn, it was just like in the middle of nowhere. It was pitch black. I just seen people running all around me. And I was like, nah, this is not for me. Like, people getting stabbed. And I was like, whoa. And I think, was thinking, man. That was a shock to you. It, it, it wasn't a shock to me. It was like, it's like, just where we was, it was like in an industrial park. It was like derelict. And I was like, and it, everyone like was scarpered. The police turned up, so you didn't know who was who. Everyone's got Stone Island on the news. It was just crazy. Yeah. But Sunderland, Newcastle, scary. To, yeah. Loads of times going away with United yeah. fans. People yeah. probably knew as well. That's fucking gigs, his brother. Get in the fucking can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's naturally... some funny times when we go into, um, when we go away to Europe. And I used to go with this certain lad, Stuart Hutchinson. And, and we'd, and one time we was late for the, for the gate. And it come on the tanner. Can Mr. Hutchison and Mr. Giggs come? And as we're coming through, we come through the hall. Ah, he's been fucking just shouting. And he's been in the rub and the duty field. We just got stick all the way through. No. But uh, did you probably ever uh, say anything about you? Uh, no, 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 no. So uh, you know, compared to when you was at that young age, and you never really were close again. Then, like you and Ryan. Uh, no, no, not really. No, no. I think that's what fascinates me more about about the story with you and him is like that it wasn't really a relationship with you that he even you know we say there's plenty more fish in the sea and you know you it's bad what happened but well, I think that they, they tried to keep me at an arm's length they, they, they pushed me away obviously I do stuff that, that that I shouldn't have done whether it's taking money or robbing something or doing this and doing that but then eventually that that calmed down when I was like 18, 19, I went to work in London as an estate agent and then the fake shake stitched me up and I ended up going to, going to court for that, getting sacked. Uh, that was just a nightmare. Um, so I was working as an estate agent in London and um, there's a shake that gets in contact with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, saying we're looking for flats can you meet me and take me around to we're looking for some apartments for our fa family members of ours so I said yeah, no problem so I've gone to meet him at the a hotel it was a um, it was a penthouse hotel walked in knocked on the door he had a, someone like a uh, what's the word someone who someone who just opens the door for him yeah like a, a, a what's the yeah. Yeah, what are they <laughs> Yeah, What's yeah. the word I'm looking for? Schaefer. No, no. no it, it's, it's, butler. Butler, yeah, that's it. Like, <laughs> just like a butler. A guy who was making him cups of teas, he sat on the couch, like with a big, no, what they called, she, with a, a shisha. Shisha, yeah. Sits down with him. He says, yeah, we're looking for some apartments. My, my, some family members are going to college here and um, we're looking for apartments for them so they can, they can stay here while they're at college. So I takes him round, sold him a few apartments, <clears throat> so we agree on these two apartments but he's going to pay a full year for two apartments he's going to pay a full year year's rent so I'm looking at big commission so I'm trying to keep this bloke sweet so said, we're, we're over here for a couple of weeks and we're looking for somewhere to go out but we can't be seen going out in the West End because one of our other family members is dying so is there anywhere we can go around here that you know so my boss was a corporate member of this lap dancing place just around the corner from when I was working. It was just near Tower Bridge. So I started taking him there, trying to keep him sweet. And all the time he's asking me for drugs. I'm saying, I don't, I'm, I'm not from around here. I don't know anyone. Anyway, that kept on going for about two weeks. And I kept on saying to him, I don't know anyone anyway. Come to a weekend, I was saying I was going to Manchester. He says, oh, can we come up and meet your brother? I says, yeah, no problem. So I've met, gone up there. We've met him outside the Marriott, took a picture. Then he's rang me, he said, oh, can you get me some drugs? I went, yeah, we're in Manchester. I, could, I know, <laughs> I, you know, you <laughs> can't learn about that one. No, so I knew a few people. So he's come to the, the, the hotel. I've gone outside, got it off him, come upstairs, got into the hotel and all the hotels camera up. And it was the fake shake from... They must have heard it in the fake shake. Yeah, I was going to say, there's only one fake it's shake, isn't it? Same one, yeah, same one. So he goes in, he goes missing. Don't hear from him like two. So I'm thinking, what's going on? I get a, a, a phone call off a reporter that, that I knew from years ago saying that you'd been stitched up, that what have you done? I haven't done anything. What are you on about? And then he started to explain what, and then I knew it was him. And then it come out in the news of the world, that was a drug deal, I was a pimp. I got sacked from my job and then I was back home in Manchester. A year later, I was in jail. For that? No, no, no. What did the you go to jail? The judge threw it out. Okay. The judge threw it out and told 
the prosecution that he needs to be looked at and eventually he got, did get looked at and he eventually did get put in jail because he was just bent, basically. They asked me to do that Amazon thing um, that was just on about the fake shake. Yeah, well... There's, there's an Amazon you, you know, documentary you, you, about it. How many people did he hit up? Uh, hundreds. Hundreds, hundreds was it? Yeah, hundreds. But there yeah. was some, a few well Sven known. Sven gone out and he did the kidnapping plot with the Beckhams. Uh, yeah, hundreds to Lisa. He did loads, though. Was that with the blowjob thing? Was it, no, that was... No, that was, that was separate. He did it. It was the you're gonna get a Hollywood job or how do you get job. away with that? Like, how can you get away with? Because he was really, so many he was people. really good at what he did. Was he? Yeah, he was really good at what he did. Top blagger, like, because you know, I've, I've had police surveillances and all kinds of stuff on him, and, and but he got me. He got me good. <laughs> so okay, so obviously, a year later. So I'm in uh, in Manchester in town. I'm at the urinal having a having a wee and there's this big city guy comes in city fan who gigs his brother mate fucking do on him I'm the piss pestering me my room you gave that mate fuck off dude so I've gone out gone on to the other side of the club with my mate has gone over and he's come bowling over saying the same thing who gigs his brother mate fucking do one so we've gone over to the other side of the club he's followed us so I've gone to my mate we need to get out of here because he's going to get done in <laughs> so we go out the club we're waiting for a taxi him and his mate come out straight away he sends someone on the mate just goes bang bangs him he not falls back X his head on the curb tooth comes through his lips so he's nearly in trouble the other guy grabs me and I'm drinking a Budweiser bottle so he grabs me so I just go bang right over his head <laughs> and punch him and yeah, so that's, and it all kicks off. Then we get off. He's obviously, the kid that I've it's gone to see if his mate's okay. And then we've got off. And it ended up getting nine months and my Cody got 15. You had nine months for bottling someone? Yeah, we, that's quite I didn't a really touch. bottle him. It, didn't, it was just like. What was it, assault? It, it, or? Was, the, it was just like a, get off. <laughs> it wasn't really. Yeah, yeah. What was the charge he gave you for that? It was a section 21 or just wasn't a sec they tried to go section 18 but it was a section 21 in there. yeah section 18 would have been longer well, that's not bad not months. the pre-sentence report was like oh you're not going to get anything you're going to get probation you're gonna oh get you this. was devil then was you yeah but as we walk in my barrister walks over and he's shaking his head I'm like what he said not good I went what he went this this judge we've got is a, is a director of Liverpool Liverpool football club <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's a prick oh no and I'm he like, fucking hates Ryan and, I'm and like, you oh no anyway he threw the, threw the book at us and yeah. gave me nine months and gave me Cody 15 wow where did you go Strange Ways Strange Ways then we go to Strange Ways after a week Mikey Cody goes to, uh, to Kirkham the open prison and they put me in with a crackhead spin me cell on the first night <laughs> he got things in it. They, they, they give me, put me in the crackhead, spin me out the first night. They tried put, putting me in, in different places. I got in, put in isolation. You get put in with some right characters. Two screws tried to put me in, uh, send me to Birmingham. And if it wasn't for someone that, that asked, that actually knew someone in this in the prison, that well, I would have been going That's to what Birmingham. happened to me on my first sentence. He sent me to Birmingham. So then it would have been a nightmare for the, to get me back. Yeah. So then by then it would have been halfway through my sentence. Instead of lab, like laving it up in Kirkham and with the open prison, is that where you went? Yeah, after a month, I ended up going there. Oh, nice! Yeah, and it was cushy there. Yeah, got a job straight away. Bin man, ten pound a week. Happy days. Laugh. Did you go out with your visit? Uh, could you leave the prison? No. Or you no. have to wait a certain yeah, amount of time no, when you're there anyway. They're more for lifers and stuff. Yeah, but they're the ones that bring the McDonald's in, the vodka. Or so yeah, yeah. KFCs. Yeah. Fucking hell. <coughs> so, what, what year was I then? Two thousand one. So this is 9-11. Yeah. Wow. I was in prison with 9-11, yeah. So the situation that, that obviously happened with, with Ryan and your and your wife, yeah. When did you meet her then? Um around 2003. Yeah, around about 2003. And how and how long were you together? How long was you good? Pardon? How long was you good with her? Never. <laughs> 2003. Never, yeah, <laughs> never. <laughs> Never thinking back to it. Really? It just, nah, never really. Never, yeah. It's just, couldn't have handpicked a worse person to, to get with. But, you know, at the end of the day, I've got a son to it, so I've got blessings for some some of it. So, But as a relationship, yeah, it was just a bad one from start to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that, I'm assuming it's just a mixture of things that, you know, the, when you say a bad one. No, it's, she was, she, 
she turned into what I was. So I've come away from that. Got a girl pregnant, I think. Like, that's me now. I'm sat down and chill. But she was like, nah, I need to go out. Let's still go out. So, okay, you go out. I'll just look after the kids. But she was obviously doing what she was doing. And So was this something that she was doing from the get-go, yeah. man? Yeah. With other people or with your brother? Other people and, yeah. But then there was a, there was a three or four-year period that it stopped. Don't know when that was because she was still sleeping when he was like five, six months pregnant with my kids. So it was... Um, it was still going on, but then it was obviously a little break. But then there was times when, when, she, when, when we talked about it, she's like, I'd be going to her work to pick her, her keys up for, for the house. And he'd be parked around the corner waiting for me to go so he can go in the office. <laughs> no, like stuff like that. I give her the idea how to, how to cheat. I says, do you mean you don't know you, have, you you don't know how to cheat? You've got the perfect job. You're an estate agent. You've got keys oh. to a million properties. That's what I did when I was an estate agent. So that's where she got the idea from. She was just getting keys and meeting in different properties. And do you think Ryan was banging other girls as well, or do you uh, think he's it's no. just well, this is where he's not just some she, sick perverted guy who wants to fuck his brother's missus. No, 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 no. It's the um, the Imogen thing. Yeah, that's when she. When I think back when she asked the question, do you think she really, he, he really loves them? And I'm thinking, why are you asking that? But I, now I know why. Because she wanted to know she if he loved herself. She was jealous. She was jealous or whatever, I don't know. But, um, but, you know, looking back now, everything's out. Is, it? is that correct? Like, yeah. is there still things you don't no, know or you think no, everything's no, out? No, no, probably there's still things, some things I don't know, but some things I do know, but some things... <laughs> But is he openly admitted? Admitted all because he's very private with it all, isn't he? Like you know, it's hard to you know. Was he the one in the paper? Were he like who was, you know, uh, anonymous he's junctions and he's tried to do things that, yeah, it's just that backfired massively. What, what is Ryan like? Is on a per, on a personal level? Yeah, he's a bit like me, to be honest. A bit like me, but um, a bit more reserved, a bit more quiet, a bit more boring. But other than that, yeah, he's, he's got a good personality. He's just quiet. I think he's just damaged by these these these, these this media and this the, the, the people that have been after him since he was seventeen. But some of it's from his own own doing. So, but yeah, when you don't come out and you don't own up to things and you don't and you just keep quiet, then it just it spe- eats you spe- inside. Yeah, and, and speculation will just go wild and sometimes even if you do something come out and say something still people are going to talk about it either way but he's chose the, the way he's, the path he's gone and he didn't have to live with it right? uh, for, 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 just for the record how did you find out that he was having this affair she she got my kids on the Friday night Max Clifford you know where Max Clifford was she was with Max Clifford at the time he got her a villa in, what was she doing with Max in, Clifford? No, he, she was looking after him. He was looking after her. So she, this had been going on for like two or three weeks in the making, the story. So she was like, can't try to get as much money as she can. So she's making his stories with Max Clifford. Gone and to, well, you've broken up with her then? For, no, I'm still with her, married. Don't even know? No. So um, she's, she's, she said she's got to go to London for a scan or something. She's got something on a scan on her brain or whatever, but it wasn't it was to meet Max Clifford. She comes back. She takes the kids away to Spain on the Friday without me knowing. So I come home and thinking, where is she? No, on the Saturday, sorry. And then six o'clock Sunday morning, her mum comes to my door with the news of the world saying, here. Yeah, that's that's how, how you found, found out. out? Yeah. So not only if she... You know, she's betrayed you yeah. in the sense of sleeping with your blood, your own blood, for however many years and yeah. lying and cheating. She saw the she's story now, about Yeah, now she's now lying to, to Spain you. And got a mum to tell me with the newspaper. <laughs> Mate. And her sister won't come in because I was friendly with her sister. Her sister in the car outside, she won't come in. Wow. Then my mate turned up and he, he was like, get her out of this house. Now. On up on the mother? Yeah. Because were they all the same? I don't She just wanted her out of the house. Because I wasn't thinking, obviously. He was like, get her out of this house. You never know. She was still there, yeah. That's how I found out, yeah. <sighs> Did you have your inklings before? No. <laughs> yes, about three or four years before. Spoke to my mum about it. Mum said, nah, don't be silly. Ooh. 
Mummy's by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. You're going to listen and your mum don't want to believe that as well. But then, um, yeah, she obviously didn't want to tell me in face because she's obviously worried that I would do something daft or but that would have never happened. And uh, so, what was that fallout like? Like, like, uh, did you speak to Ryan? Um, yeah, after it, I, I ended up going to Will's. Went to Will's house and then all week, they're constantly... Whose house? All, Will, Will Meller. Right, yeah, sorry. I went to Will Meller's house and stayed with him. And my mum, my brother, Callum, Carly, Paul, Haley, were all in Spain asking me to go over with them. And he was with his wife and his kids. Ryan. And they wanted me to go over there. And yeah, that wasn't happening. So I stayed with Will for the whole week. And then eventually he got up the courage to meet me, which was about three or four weeks after. Um, I was at a friend's house. who's no longer with us. Who died, one of my mates, um, Lloyd. But yeah, it was at his house. And then just said it was about sex. He was just this. He wasn't did it. just feeling sorry for himself, basically telling me about how his contract was crap with Reebok. He's got a put with all that. Just his contract with Reebok made me stick his... His contract with Reebok was the shittest contract in the world. Bearing in mind, he's getting paid like 60 grand a year just to wear trainers. And that's the shittest contract. Well, you fucking signed it, you dick. He was with him for years and it was the worst football boot I've ever worn. I, is that... Are you, the Reebok. I remember thinking... Football boots. They were the worst football boots ever. And he was with him from, from 18 till he retired. So... He signed them to be multiple contracts. But yeah, it was all like, I'm going to get stick in this, I'm going to get stick there. So like, Wait one minute, let me get fucking violin out. Wait a minute, mate. This is about me. Yeah. You're kind of liking it. No, isn't it? So it was. So that's you, it, did you it feel like that? Yeah. Do you that, feel that was the point where I felt sorry for him? For himself. Felt sorry. For, oh, I felt sorry for him. Mate. Well, that's what you meant to do. All the it? stuff that you've done and you're going on like some bitch, just fucking get away from me. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy, and and obviously you know you've got a kid in in all of this as well. Yeah, who he, he lives with me now. My daughter lives with me. My eldest daughter is twenty three. She lives with me, and he lives with me. He's now seventeen, so they both live with me. So obviously it was in the media when it, like we, a couple of, like a year ago something was happening with Ryan. Like, is it what's going on with him now? And is it able well, to be was, spoken about? Well, that was uh, well, yes. The court it went to court. It was supposed to go for a real tri retrial. And it never did. So. And what was that about? For me, just a fallout with two women and a, and a bloke. That's it. <laughs> Nothing really. He's, he's supposedly have hit her, but then she's lied about having cancer and da 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 da, or nice. having a baby. Or they're both lying. Fucking, they're both as bad as each other. So he, he obviously one right of them sold. What, done her makeup up so she looked like she'd been battered even more and then the papers to have a picture yeah. of it so when you he hasn't doing... had the best luck have you with when it comes to me you know, women have you <laughs> no no his own own doing he's had some his wife was a really good wife the amount yeah. of times that he cheated on her and she still stick with him two or three kids so yeah yeah he's man. had some good relationships but when you start cheating on them they, 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 these these good people go away don't they I, um, his I wife wish... his wife who's got two kids do she put with a load of shit there's only so much you can put up with no there's only so much you can yeah. put up with what your father it, say about it well, he was just as bad, so he can't really say anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he can't really say anything. He was just as bad, so he can't say anything. But did you get now, some, now did, he's, was now it family he's, support Now he's you, a good though? father. And he, he's to, to my younger brother. No, if he'd have done... If he'd have treated me the way he treats my our young brother now, he wouldn't be living in that two up, two down now. Uh, he, he wouldn't be, that wouldn't be happening. I'd have looked after him and he'd have been, he'd have been looked after, but because he didn't do that, I went that way. 
But if he would do what if he was doing what he's doing now, he takes him to rugby, looks up to, to foot. Nah, nah. He's never watched me play football. Only watched me play rugby once. My really? Mom, my mum's never watched me play football. So you've done all that on your own. You know, when you look at families, you grow up and their their parents are at, you know they're everything. Of course, it must have been some sort of hereditary or genetic. Uh, passed on the line with your talents and stuff, but they never supported you at all no. through any of that. No. Went to Turkey for nine months. Not one person come and watch me. I tell her I played Cardiff and I had a trial with Cardiff and I didn't want to be here because I didn't want to be around my dad. So I just didn't perform. They just, just Tainted. went through the motions mm. and we played them and we drew with them one all. Scott Young was playing. It was a good side back in then. Some of them were playing for the first team. Was it Youngie? Scott Young? Scott Young, played, yeah. yeah. There's a few good players in them days. And uh, old man of the match, scored a goal. We drew one all with them, but they had a good side. They should have beat us. But And as I was going off the coach, why did he perform like that when he was with us? I just said, I didn't want to be here. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild, isn't it? You, um, you and Ryan, would you, do you think you'll ever... Like I say, I've just stopped calling. You can bring me whenever you want. So yeah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not bitter yeah. with you then. No, no, not at all. I've moved on. You know, I've moved on. I've got a new career started about two or three years ago, working in schools, now working at SMH school. What doing uh, with yeah. the football, is it? No, just no. with the kids, SMH school teaching. Yeah. Maths and English and just looking out for them, yeah. Do that in SMH school and Oldham. Done it for the last two years now. And that's probably what I'll do too. <laughs> What was finish? your mental health like and stuff? It, 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 you must have been at some low points during them times, eh? No? No, no, not really, no. How would you, no. you cope with it? Like, for people out there who probably just go through the same stuff? all the stuff? shit that, that I've gone through in life that I've been on my own, just dealt with it on my own, mostly. So something like that. Obviously, it was difficult. Being at Will's helped because you had a house, a nice house where no one could get round or to get into. Yeah. And it was... Uh, spent there for about a week and... Yeah, it was just, it was weird that, that week. It was like, it was like, I was going through the motions and like, there was a cloud of me going, what the fuck's going on here? What's going on? So it was just like mad. It was constantly every, every day, different, the same story, but it's different stories connected for about two weeks. You couldn't get away from it. People throwing you white vans, big lenses. And it was just, yeah, it was mad. Yeah, that's wild. I know you can just imagine. It's a nightmare, isn't it? It is an absolute nightmare because it's your not reputation, but it's your pride, your, your humility. Well, in my head, I was thinking to myself, well, I've done nothing wrong. All I've just tried to be is a good father, a good husband, and she's just been out gallivanting, and he's just a just an idiot. Have you ever, have you ever questioned yourself in in like? On reflection, thinking, okay, this has happened with with my wife. It's, it's involved with my brother. None of my family speak to me. I, you know, I've said the the, the the phone's open. But have you ever questioned yourself if, if it's anything that you've done? Oh yeah, definitely. Be, I know what it is. What it's about. They constantly think that I was selling stories as a, as a young person only because I was friendly to one reporter because I liked him when he used to go out and he used to go out in the same places and drink because I'm friendly with people. Doesn't mean I'm selling secret stories. Is that what it was? Yeah. And they still think it's a day. Still to this day, they're fucking idiots. Where's the proof of me selling stories? Where's the proof? There is no proof. There'd be a reporter now. If a reporter watched this, we could go back into history and find out. The only, the only ones that would, the, the little things that would, I would make up stories. We say, well, what, is, your, has Ryan got a new uh, Bentley? Is it black? I'd say no. Or is it blue? I'd say no, it's black when it was blue. Little things like that. Now, is that selling private stories? So it's probably more of like, not in maybe this sense, but, no, but from this, what I would look, you're the mind, deadbeat brother trying to cash in on yeah, a couple of things. Yeah. Bearing in mind, this is 27, 20, we're talking 26, 27 years ago now. And they've they've made up with me and doing it, and we've been fine after it. But then, as soon as all this shit happens, then because I sold my story on this, then oh, is that it again? There you go. Yeah, but you didn't no, originally. I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. Like, no, I didn't. Okay, I, didn't. I wasn't. Doing... I wasn't gonna because I met Ryan and I spoke to him. He says, right, well, let's get our relationship back together again. Let's. But you've got to do that. You've got to instigate. It. I'm not gonna do it. And he had nothing for six, seven months. Not one phone call. 
nothing. So, fine, Look, okay. Of course you've done these podcasts now and stuff, but if, if you know, <laughs> you haven't wanted to sell a fucking story of your, of your missus cheating on Mate, you. If I was going to sell some stories, I'd have sold some stories last year and buried this prick. Buried him through some woman beer. Because there's some stories that I know could bury him. So if I wanted to sell stories, I'd do it. But there's not, why would I want to do that? Why? I wouldn't. I'm not that bitter. I'm not that twisted. But he needs to keep, needs to, needs to be careful. Because I could have. There's a lot of people could have, but they didn't. And it's all from him making the choices he's made. Not no one else. Yeah, you can't portray someone to be a... You can't, uh, you can't judge or portray his... someone for, if, for what they might want to say when you've already done the action. You can't go on, go through life going to this nice, innocent family man when you're banging everything in sight looking for clunge. How old is he? 48, 49? He needs to grow the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, like it, must, it must not be nice as a brother as well, like, in it, you know, because, you know, oh, you've they, got to be careful, you, you bring around it. Yeah, like. just, but all my family, they, they, I think they think they was like, they was like my father, so they keep me at arm, arm's length, but you no, know, there's nothing like it. I'm not money, money oriented. I don't give a shit about yeah. money. I work at a job that I don't get much money on. If I wanted to uh, money, I could go fucking guitar or... Saudi Arabia coaching a hundred thousand yeah, pounds. Yeah. I've been offered that. Easily. I'm not yeah. interested. I've got three children to look after. Be home and be present. So That's it is do you think it is that divide then of team mum, like your mum's side, dad's side? And your dad's boy well, like Well, I don't I don't really know. You'd have to ask them. Your little Danny like I don't really think about it to be honest. There's more important things to think about moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I think before we do move on to that, though, there is, I want to highlight the Paddy Power advert, like, because... <laughs> did they come up with this? Or was this, like, a joint thing? No, Because we've done adverts. Like, we've done Manscaped funny ones and stuff. And we obviously, we created them. Like, we're not that lucky to have... No, it was all them. It was all, all them, all, was it? All them. Um, did you the, say the, to them, just go as far as you want? No, no, the script was a bit different. Yeah. The script was... In the script was us slagging whales off. That ain't happening. <laughs> Do you know what? That's what I love about you. Like, you know, that, as, as much as you come across as this Mancunian lad, you know, this red, well, you are a well, pure Welsh. It's, it's the only tattoo I've got. Wow. That says something. <laughs> so, it's, um, no, it was all then, but he wanted to slag the whales off, but then that's when it changed it to Wales. Losing all the time. Again, and the problems with the manager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's when he twisted it a bit, but <laughs> it was... Um, yeah, it was up. That was based the script. It's a little twig, tweaks, but I obviously had to meet the director, go through it in the hotel a few times. I had a coach, shout out to Martin Gibbons, the coach who, who helped me. I've never really given him a shout out before, but he was massively helping Martin Gibbons. So anyone who after coaching or acting, acting, speak to Martin. You fucked it now, haven't you? But uh, yeah, going through it, um, so I didn't just turn up and acting. It was like a process of prepping, going through it a bit. But straight away, my the, the coach said, "Yeah, you'll 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 nail it. You're doing it everything right." And then yeah, it's it was um, it was a mad process though. Just like think of this, but on that it was just like hundred people on steroids, like five people on lighting, sound, yeah. Trailers. It was just, it was just mad. Well, I've seen, I've seen you like, you know, the, it is. It, well, you, you've worked on sets and stuff, haven't you? Like, you can imagine how runners, grand people, just for me clothing. It was just like it was mad, it was mad, different, different locations. Yeah. The first one, the first day we turned up was me walking out of the house and driving off in the car. We do need milk. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last day we did yeah, that. That's good, though. The second day we did um, the football the football scene and inside the house. And then the, th the third day we did some all the pictures and stuff. Was it three days? Yeah, and the third day we did pictures and stuff. But it was a massive process from going from... It wasn't so much... It was the time was setting up, obviously, you know, the setting yeah. up and everything, the lighting, and that's the yeah, light, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. but all the different locations, every house was a different location. 
And do you think though, like, you know, through all this, because these are big things, like, you know, they, they... Well, he started some careers with these people who, who got this, who's involved in this Paddy Power event. They've gone off and run, run awards through it. Yeah, I and bet. And gone on and to, to have That's really on this TV now, it was, young, it? it was a young crew that these Paddy Powers... They were some quite ambitious the first, with it. Yeah. yeah. Some of the first adverts they'd done. Yeah. So, yeah, it was a good... Brilliant. From, for have it to have that on their CV was, was good for them, yeah, because it was... Yeah, good, do you think when, if like Ryan or the family see that, they think, oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake, what's he doing here? <laughs> they wouldn't have liked it, but secretly they'd have fucking laughed about it. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. It was it's taking Mick out of myself as well, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, that's him, mate, isn't it? You've, yeah. you've, you've become comfortable with it, haven't and you? it was and a bit of a healing process as well, plus, you know, they paid well as therapy. well. Therapy. Yeah. Paid well as well. But that always helps I, I could eat. Well. And they looked after me as well all through the pandemic. They kept me on a retainer. So all through that pandemic, I was getting paid, which was which was massive because I didn't have a job then. But that gave me the, the idea of thinking, right, what I'm going to do now for the rest of my life. And that gives me the chance to do the teaching courses to now putting me in the job that I'm in now. Yeah. So, yeah. What's the lowest point uh, in your life, Rod, would you say? Lowest point? Yeah. Oh, when I was younger, like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I was bed sofa surfing. And, yeah. But even them times, we had good times because people looked out for me and we'd be going out and no hacienda. So, but them all them low points, they're, they're what, you know, makes you, you, you're stronger, obviously, yourself. You've been through low, low points, yeah. you wouldn't be where you are now if you didn't have them yeah. low points. And know if you, you know, you don't want to go back to there because you know how hard it is to get back to where you are. So, no, just I gotta agree. keep mentally strong, keep positive, and just be a good person. Just yeah, just be a good person. That always shines through. Yeah, but the Paddy Power thing was a good, good, massive response. I remember like it's like four or five million on YouTube on the first weekend. It was Wild. Like massive, yeah. But then he, then I shouldn't say he, someone banned it. Someone complained about it, and it got banned because <laughs> it was promoting gambling. I never knew that. It got banned. So, oh, some, because someone, of gambling. Someone complained, a high, high, high-end lawyer from London. Interesting. So we don't know who that was, but <laughs> it got an idea. Yeah. It was banned, but they were buzzing with that. So, no problem, we'll just shorten it. We'll just take them bits out and we'll just shorten it and change it from a minute advert to a 30 second one. Laughing, laughing. <laughs> Well, you know, we're into 2024 now. What you got planned this year? Like I say, just the, the job, I mean, it's, it's full on. It's, it's in an SMH school. It's, I've got a full on class. It's every day. You know, you need to be consistent with these kids because uh, some of them haven't got fathers or, or mothers. Most of them in prison or they've got no father, whatever story. But no, it's a really good job. It's really rewarding. And um, it's a really good team, staff. And the pupils, the kids, yeah. the really good kids as well. But I really do like this job and probably I'll, I'll stick it. Are you still in Salford? No, I live in Bolton now. Bolton? I live in Bolton, yeah. Mm. Um, that won't be for long, probably. I've had that house. I bought this house with her in 2009. So it's the house that I bought with me. It's quite tainted then. <laughs> well, you say that, but at yeah, a time I wouldn't go back there. But now at this minute... It is what it yeah, is. It doesn't really bother me, yeah. So... Do you speak to her at all? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I've got to, but yeah, not much, not much, because she irritates me as well. So, yeah, she's not a nice person. <laughs> yeah. Just... Um, football, just just briefly. Um, obviously, you ain't been doing too well this year, have you? Old United. You're a United fan as well, isn't you? What What do you reckon? Where do you think you're going to finish this season? We need to get the upstairs sorted first. Now it, it seems to go in the right direction. Um, all the right noise is happening. But there's still a lot of dead wood that needs to be got out of there. Hey, upstairs, you're saying, yeah? And, and on the pitch, your marshals. Yeah. Um, the people like that, you need to get, to get them out. And even like people like your Scott, Scott McTominay's, even though he's done very well. It's, it's, you know, to play for Man U, you've got to be a different You've got to be able to play football, even though he scores goals, but you see it on the, when we played against Aston Villa. Um, with you, with ball playing midfielders, you keep the ball and play football and, and retain the football. It's, it's massive. Scott, it's not one of his strengths. Yeah, well, you know, we, we, although 
you know, being a United fan all your life, basically, and watching your brother's team play, like, it must be frustrating as a Man United fan to see the quality of change. It's, it's frustrating when you see your, your brother, uh, academy player, how hard he works um, on the football field, and then you see someone like Marcus Rashford, who's going the same path, but doesn't put the same amount of work in. That's frustrating. Yeah. Um, whatever whatever's going on in your, in your head and whatever's going on. If you're not fit to play, don't, don't play. play. Yeah, but you, the, the the least you can give is 100%. Yeah, I agree. The Do you least. think of Anthony? The problem is, he's, it's if you were to pay 40, 50 million pounds for him, you wouldn't be like, mm, he's like 90 the, million. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, that's not his fault, though, is it? So look at Darwin Nunes, no one's come. Mo- I love him. him. <laughs> Concedo. Enzo That's Fernandez. because of the work rate he puts in, though Nunes. Like you know, he's not he's not the greatest. You know, well, and he, he'll miss fucking. Anti, though, he puts the work rate in. It's just the other shit that frustrates you. Yeah, but should he be playing on the right? Should he play on the left? It just frustrates you. But um, yeah, there's 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 you can see. Yeah, you can. See, you, know, you don't play for Brazil if you're a mug. No, he of course. play for Brazil, but. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is a frustrating wing. He's like a nanny. Yeah. I can see that. But nanny got... Garnacho. But nanny was in a decent side, you see. Garnacho's good. It's, it's you I, watched play Gan- with, I, play, I watched Garnacho, the youth cup. I took my me, me, me lads into football, my young lads into football. So I took him to watch the um, youth cup last year when they won it. And um, I come away from that thinking Garnacho was a good player, but I come away from that thinking Kobe Maino was a better player. Really? Yeah. And he was only 16 at the time. I was really impressed with it. Yeah. yeah. Anything you want to say as a mank? Yeah? Is there yeah. anyone you think needs to go? No, Varane, there's, there's a few. There's a few. Varane. Uh, what? You think he needs to go? Yeah. He's not. He's, he's always injured. Yeah. He can't suit the British game. Week in, week out. Yeah. I don't think I, I would... We were talking about this, like, I would keep Maguire. I think he's impressed me the way, way he's, what he's done in the last yeah. three or four months. He's gone back to the first two years when he's got there. Because um, we need solid defenders, midfit, solid defenders. But I still think we need another one to go along Martin. Do you think Ten Hag's going to stay or... Do you like I him? Know. I do. But over the last six weeks, the football, taking out Aston Villa has not been good enough. Mm. It's just boring and it's just like rinse and repeat. It's just yeah. boring. But obviously, the Aston Villa game was more Manchester United-esque. Going for the throats, making chances. Yeah. But you've got to have willing runners for that and people in the in the midfield who keep the football. When you've got Eriksen, Manu and Fernandes, you've got three footballers in there. I think McTominay, when he's in there, all right, he scores some goals, but he's not very good at his ball retention for me. Who do you think is going to win the Premier League this, this season? I think Liverpool, you know. <laughs> I really, no, I do. I don't really want them to, but I think City are a little bit off it. Arsenal don't look great. No, I'm gutted we drew. <laughs> Was you happy with that result? What do you think of what Dyke, you know, Dyke's uh, words were? We're keen, weren't too happy. Were you happy with that result at, at Anfield? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You'd be happy with the result 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a difficult place even to go though Keane said you were you were in that great twenty years ago, you would be happy with the draw at Anfield, yeah. same as you would. Yeah, he's, um, yeah, I don't think there's nothing wrong with what he said. I think Keane's getting a bit. Yeah, <laughs> he's just felt a bit better. Like, yeah, I'm Dutch, they're arrogant people anyway. Aren't yeah, they? but well, nah, I, nah, I think um, it was. It was it wasn't a rant. It was just yeah. It oh, was, I know. But I uh, think I think Liverpool. If we Liverpool, but you know, if if City. Get their acts together, then sit up. Yeah, walk it. Yeah. I can't. Uh, I, did Arsenal? Yeah, no, Arsenal lost, didn't they? Last, Arsenal night. last two 0 Yeah. Oh fuck yeah, no. So it could be anyone's out of them three, yeah. really. And just quickly, rugby. Like, so do, do, do you follow a rugby? Yeah, team? yeah, yeah. Who? Rugby league. Do you, you? Is it just league you follow? Rugby is league, it? Salford. Yeah. Well, so, obviously Wales. Watch Wales rugby union. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. No, no rugby union. Uh, club team yeah. it's Wales what position was you in? scrum half scrum half or stand off at scrum half rugby league yeah yeah. give me the ball more the ball yeah anything on is there anything we can see of you on uh, 
YouTube or anything? Oh, or? rugby. Yeah. No. We going back a bit yeah, there. Yeah, no, rugby. I stopped playing rugby when I was like 14, 15. You know, YouTube yeah. then, yeah. Even even football, you'd be, you'd be struggled to see. It. FC United, all the games was televised then, 2006. So scored a few hat tricks there. Yeah, I've seen. At Salford, against Salford as well. That was because the manager... Uh, was from Salford and I was I lived in Salford at the time and I used to get a local paper and I read the paper and he says I wouldn't swap any of their players they're all players I wouldn't swap any of them and it, yeah, it fucking pissed me off so you bagged that trick that trick yeah yeah one four two yeah so Rodri I know but, uh, you're a uh, time constrictant because it's the uh, festive period and you've got only a certain amount of things to do before you go back up to Manchester so I will never leave you but there is, obviously, I want to say a massive thank you for touching base with us. It's been really nice. Yeah, no. Um, there's one thing we do with all our guests is down the camera, um, if you could send us off with a positive message, it could be about anything you've gone through in life. It's just for the people out there, give them a positive message. Um, yeah, just, you're always going to get knocks in life. you just got to gotta be able to get off, brush your shoulders down and, and get back on with it. But, you know... Life is all about ups and downs and you just got to roll with the punches and move on. Rodri, thank back. you so much, mate. Have a, have a great 2024. Yeah, and you. And, uh, you know, you never know. We'll touch base again in the near future. Yeah, that seems to flow, that one. Yeah. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Uh, again, massive thank you to Rodri for coming on. Um, I hope you all have a great new year. Stay central. The Central Club.